The young man was only 20 years old. It did not need to happen. What's going on y'all? Welcome back to the channel, Wealth Hacker Labs. I am your gracious host, Jeff Rose. And if I'm not upbeat and chipper, the story I wanna share with you is one that I wish I didn't have to share. And it's a reminder that investing, anytime that you are putting money into anything, there is always going to be risk. And there's also needs to be an understanding. And what we're seeing nowadays is that there are so many different platforms that you can invest into that you don't even have to leave your living room. You can download app after app after app and put money to work, which is awesome. Like technology is awesome, but technology without proper knowledge can be dangerous. And in case you haven't seen this headline, if you're not seeing this in the news, it's a tragic story about a 20 year old man that took his life because he thought that he was over $730,000 in the hole. And the crazy thing is that he actually wasn't $730,000 in the hole. It showed on his phone, it showed on his app, and in case you don't know this yet, the investment app that he had his money in was Robinhood. Now, Robinhood is one of the many disruptors in the personal finance industry, in the investing industry. I mean, they have came out of nowhere and they truly have disrupted the industry. And it's awesome that you can download an app and start investing in a matter of minutes. But with Robinhood, they allow young investors to invest into options. And options are something that, even for me, I was a financial planner for 16 years. And me personally, I've never actually bought any options. Of my clients, I think I had maybe a handful, and on one hand, a handful of my clients actually bought options. Now, for the most part, I understand options. If I were actually going to invest into options today, I would need to you know, get, kind of brush up on my option skills before I actually put any money in there. But for a 20 year old young man who had a Robin Hood account that had $16,000 in it, he went from $16,000 invested to opening up his phone and seeing that he was down $730,000. So what exactly happened? And this is how I discovered the story. So I was on Twitter the other day and I came across uh, apparently somebody that I follow on Twitter, several people that I follow on Twitter had either retweeted or liked this person's comment and I'll share comment or his tweet. And this guy's name is Bill Brewster. And basically he's just sharing how his cousin, his young cousin, his 20 year old cousin, Alexander Kearns had committed suicide. Uh, he committed suicide by apparently putting himself in the front of an oncoming train. And uh, there was a note and what Alex or Alexander had shared was he just thought that he blew up his life. Uh, he thought that he was that he owed $730,000 because whenever he logged into his Robin Hood account, that's what he saw. But this was the screenshot of apparently, I guess this is Alexander's account. So this was his account. Oh, there it is right here. I didn't see this initially. So, so you can see the screenshot. I want to see if I can make this bigger so you all can really see it. There we go. All right, so it shows that he's investing. He's got $16,176, you see that, right? But scroll down and you see cash, negative $730,000. And there's in, in red, I'm gonna make it even bigger so you can see it, negative $730,000. So this is what Alexander saw whenever he logged into his Robinhood account. So I can only imagine being 20 years old and thinking, oh my gosh, you know, this kid, I think he was going to college, uh, was back home uh, in Naperville living with his parents, I'm sure because his college was closed down. And to, to all of a sudden think that, like, oh wow, okay, I'm investing, I'm investing for my future. And now I've got a, I owe $730,000. Like how do you even tell 
anybody that like how do you even tell your parents how do you tell your friends i mean i can i can't even imagine like what this kid was going through and i say kid i'm 40 plus years old i mean i mean it's, i mean he's a kid he's 20 years old he had a, a, a long future ahead of him he did not need to end this one in this forbes article so this was the first article that went live sharing the story uh, this interviewed the uh, the cousin there, Bill Brewster, who we saw on the previous tweets. But in this article, it shared like in his uh, in his suicide note how he should have canceled out on the trades. Um, let me make this smaller so you can see it. And I'm trying to see, I just saw it. I mean, he just basically said uh, Alexander said, you know, um, he should have canceled out the trade and got out. But I mean, this is, and this is the part that's the craziest is that he actually didn't owe seven hundred thirty thousand uh, dollars. I don't know if it's I'm not going to call it a glitch in the Robinhood software or the Robinhood app. It's just it's the way that it's reported, and I'm going to explain what was going on so that you understand. And also, in the case of if this happens to you, if it happens to somebody else that the same tragic mistake doesn't happen. So in this case, Austin was buying options and I don't wanna to take too much, try, too much time trying to explain exactly what an option is, but basically you have the ability to buy an option or sell an option and, and what you're buying essentially is when you buy one option, it's like buying or selling a hundred stocks of any given share. And you can buy or sell options, you can buy calls, or you can sell puts, or, uh, and that's basically what the options are. And even though it's, it's not, they don't know exactly what uh, Alex Alexander did, what the speculation is based off of, the, I guess the suicide note and what the balance was, and also the stock uh, that he was buying or selling the options are, was that he was doing what is called a bull put spread. And this is actually from the Forbes article. If you want to check it out, I'll have it in the description and the show notes. So you can check this out. Also have a link to a CNBC article that talks about it. But also, I guess I should share that he was selling put options on Amazon stock. You know, Amazon, very popular company. And essentially on a bull put spread, what you are doing is you are selling a put option at a higher strike price. And then you're also buying uh, a put at a lower strike price. And just so that we're on the same page, a strike price is, this is the price that whenever a stock hits a certain price, you know, so if the stock is currently trading at $2,000 and you're selling a put and it's, let's say the price is 2620, you know, and that's what you're buying or selling the put on. Like, so basically you're looking for that that stock to hit a certain price. And if you're buying a call, you either want it to get to that number so that you can exercise it. If you're selling the put, then you don't want it to get to that. And you just basically make the money on selling the put. And that's what Alex Alexander was trying to do. It's relatively like, it's a, a safer strategy because it can limit your downside. It also does limit your upside, but that's why it's a more or less a safer strategy, but you're like, okay, if it's a safer strategy, then what in the world happened? So here's an example. So like on June 16th, Amazon was trading at $2,615 per share. If you were neutrally bullish, so basically Forbes is trying to show what could have happened. They don't know exactly, but based off the, the timeline, you know, what Amazon stock was at that time, I mean, this is a pretty good idea what could have been the case. So if you're neutral to bullish on Amazon, meaning that you think that it's going to go up or um, you think it's going to stay flat, you could sell a put option that expire on the 17th with a 2615 strike price for $28 per option. So basically what you're doing there is that, okay, if the stock price is currently 2615 and on the 16th and the very next day, if it stays at 2615, then you can sell those. And if somebody buys it, then you're going to make $28 per option. So at one option, you could sell three of those and then you could make uh, you know, the $28 per option. 
So that's one side of this strategy and to limit the risk, you know, the other leg of the trade is to purchase a put at a lower strike price. So in the example, they're saying purchasing a put option at 26.10 at a cost of $26. So the $2 differential, so basically $2 between the two. So you got the cost and then the price on selling it. So if you multiply it by a hundred, so basically you could earn $200 uh, for every contract that you sell. And if you did three of those, so that would be basically making $600. So more than likely this, this is a strategy that Alex Alexander was, was trying to do, but the one little wrinkle or the one potential that could happen is that what happens when the stock closes between the two strike prices? The put you bought, the lower strike price expires worthless, but the one you sold is in the money and legally binds you to buy the stock at the strike price. And this is the big one. In the case of the three contracts of, of Amazon at 26.15, that would be $784,000 to purchase 300 shares. And that's what, this is all like speculation. This is all based off assumption. Once again, looking at the timeline at how things worked out, but that's how possibly that his account, the, the screenshot that you saw previously could have shown that negative, negative 730,000, uh, negative $730,000 balance. But here's the part that this is the, this is the sad part. I mean, this, this is the sad part is that depending on when this happened, like, I don't know if this was over the weekend or it was after market when, when the market reopened, if Alex could have logged in his account, cause right now it's, it's not showing that he has the actual shares. He's just showing that, you know, he's on the hook for the 780, or I guess in his case, $730,000. But once the market reopened, the, the underlying stock would have been credited to his account and he would have been out maybe a couple hundred. I mean, let's say even worst case, a couple thousand, but it wouldn't have been the $730,000. I mean, I just, I think about this, right? I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm a father, I've got four kids. My oldest is gonna be 13 soon. And I could, I, I could see like, if he made this mistake, like he would, he wouldn't even know what to do. You know, like I, I feel like I've created like a, a safe place where he could come to me and say, dad, I messed up. But I mean, come on, like 20 years old, 15 years old, whatever. Like that, the fact that, because who's, who's gonna pay for it? You know, obviously it's not gonna be him. So then would his parents be liable? And you think I just ruined not only my future, but I'm also gonna ruin my parents' future. Like I can't even imagine what this kid was going through. And so like, that's, 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 that's the rub. Like that's what's going on. And it could have been avoided. When I saw this on Twitter, uh, I think just a couple days ago, I'm like, oh man, well, I, I wonder, you know, was there something else going on? Like, you know, I mean, did, did he actually, I, I don't know, because it's like, I think, how does a 20 year old, because that's basically what Alexander thought. And I think he even said this in his suicide note, like how does a 20 year old get purchasing power of three quarters of a million dollars? Like that doesn't even make sense. But the reality is that he, technically he didn't, but that's what his Robin Hood account showed. Oh, and that's, yeah, that's just what's going on. And there's some other articles. So uh, this was a CNBC article, I saw this. And here's one thing I, I found pretty insightful. This was, uh, so th this reporter from CNBC shared this, and then this person wrote, tweeted back and said, you know, very sad. You might want to check the explanation of option contracts. The buyer of the option contract has the right to exercise, whereas the seller has the obligation to honor the contract if the buyer exercises. A misunderstanding could be devastating as we may have seen. 
So even in the CNBC article, however, the explanation of a contract was explained, that was totally redundant. Uh, one small twist, one small change in how it's explained means everything, which in the case of Alexander Kearns, I mean, that's also what happened. And here's the actual article itself. I'll have a link to both of these so that you can check this out. Oh, I mean, it's just, it's, it's, it is, it's devastating. I mean, I don't even know how else to say other than, I mean, this is devastating because this could have been avoided. And I think what's even, even sad right now, and I get it because you got compliance and they've got their legal team, which whatever, uh, at this point in time, Robin Hood hasn't responded. I mean, they've given their tr tragic event, you know, probably they don't want to comment on anything yet, but they've been relatively silent. And it's, and basically what, what the cousin Bill Brewster is saying, and I'm sure a lot of people are saying now, like there has to be something in the app that says like that, that differentiates between you don't owe $730,000. Like it doesn't mean that you're, we're going to come after you. I mean, th there's gotta be something and there's gotta be some understanding, some education on what's going on. And, and when you can, I'm not, I'm not putting this on Alex at all because he, he bought option contracts. So he checked a box. He was, he was able to do it. You know, Robin hood made that available to him. And for him to not understand that he didn't owe that. But like, if you see the screenshot, like how, why would you not think that? Why would you not think that you owe $730,000? Because that's what the app is showing. That's what makes this so sad that it, he thought he owed that much money and he didn't. And if he would have waited just a few more days, then he would have seen otherwise. Uh, definitely not the most exciting story I wanted to share, but obviously when you see so many people and a lot of the headlines you see, so many millennials flooding to Robin Hood, there are others out there that are, are making trades like this and we just don't want the same thing to happen. We don't want the same thing to happen to somebody else. We don't, Alexander Kearns did not need to pass away. He did not need to take his own life. So now you think about all those involved. You have his cousin who is devastated. You have his parents that are devastated. You have the person, the, the, the train operator. I mean, I can imagine what they're going through knowing that they took a 20 year old's life. I mean, there's so many people that are hurt and devastated by the situation and it could have been avoided. So I'm not saying that you shouldn't open a Robin Hood account. I still have my Robin Hood account. You know, this is part of my grow your dough challenge that, you know, I'm buying some stocks in there. I've not made some trades in a while, but I'm really here to see how they're going to respond to this. Any changes that they're, they're going to make, obviously something needs to be done. Something needs to be done. All right, y'all, hope you, I wanna say hope you enjoyed this video, but I hope it was helpful. I hope it was insightful. And if you know anybody that is trading in Robinhood, that is wanting to open Robinhood account, let them check out this video, or at least share the articles, the CNBC or the Forbes article, so they can check that out make sure that they understand what they could, be getting, they could be getting into if they decide to trade options. All right, y'all, this is Jeff Rose reminding you that it's your money, it's your life, and all you can make it awesome. Until next time, peace.